Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. You're on the edge of the bed. Okay, good. I think we're both in there now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We're doing an in the crib, outside from the, the crib. crib. Yeah, outside the crib. Outside yeah, the crib. outside the crib. <laughs> Here. We've got the crickets, so forgive us for the crickets. Hopefully the audio is good. Babyface is here, of course. Neckbone is somewhere rolling around. He'll, he'll probably cut us off in a second. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I wanted to talk about... Um, how easily can you lose your your two A rights? Way too easily. So yeah, I mean we, we haven't and, gotten into a lot of that. We haven't gotten into a lot of that yeah. yet. But uh, because because it's the people that are pushing red flag laws will tell you that you're fear mongering. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen to good good people. <laughs> you're fear mongering. It won't yeah. happen to you. Right. And you're they're wrong. They're absolutely yeah. wrong. So we are talking a little bit about red flag laws and how people around the country, we're in Florida, of course. Mm-hmm. And so there's different laws, different places. I think about 14, 16 states have red flag laws. Too many. At this point, One uh, is too many, everyone's but... trying to do it. People are trying to put red flag laws in effect on a federal level. There's yeah. taps. There's all kinds of stuff that yeah. we have to think about that we'll probably get into if you guys want to see more of that. But here's an article that's in Ammo Land, and I'll put a link um, in there for anyone who wants to see this article. It's called Florida Man Has Firearms Rights Taken Away Over Mistaken Identity. <clears throat> yeah, so, and basically this is about Jonathan Carpenter of Osceola, St. Yep. Cloud area, I guess. Not far from here. Yeah, and um, a little bit of background. Uh, he's also, he also is a Marine, Marines, Marines for life. Mm-hmm. I think he did about five years or so in the Marines. And basically... There's um, these older ladies, I think, that had someone living in their home that claimed were, to have had that renting, same name. They were renting a room to a guy with the same name. Yeah. Or, or claimed the same name. Right. We don't um, know if that was the person's real name. They, he was a drug dealer and they filed a restraining order against him. Right. The court system, from the article that we're reading, it sounds like the court system then went out and did a search for anybody with that name that had a concealed carry permit. Right, and that's how they came across. And that's how they found him. John Carpenter. They found him. Yeah. And they said, "Oh, here's the name. He has a concealed carry permit, and he's a dangerous criminal. Uh, send him a, a legal letter, a mm-hmm. certified letter, mm-hmm. and uh, let him know that his CCW is now forfeit, and he needs to turn in all his firearms." Yes. So now he he went down to try to deal with this. They told him to go talk. I think downstairs to the sheriff's department. Yeah. Yeah. They said go downstairs. Yeah. The sheriff will deal with it. It's not a big deal. Right. Showed up. Shows up at the sheriff's area downstairs and they tell him uh no you're gonna need to turn in all your guns not only is this standing uh but you need to turn your guns in right so they want his ccw they want his guns and basically he can't sort this out until that lady goes to court yeah who did that went goes to court and the issue here is you might say well how come you guys are you guys sure it's not this guy well they have two completely different body (laughs) types the only thing they have in common is that they're both white and men and that's it yeah one the the drug dealer is 5'8 and 110 pounds, uh, the real John Carpenter. 5'11, 5'11 200 something. something. Yeah. They're not, one's got black hair, he's got, he's bald. So they're, yeah. they're not even close to the same person. Right. Basically, if anybody would have done just the smallest bit of searching at who, I mean, you could have looked at his CCW ID, his yeah. photo, mm-hmm. and been like, nah, this isn't the right dude. Yeah. Uh, they clearly didn't do any sort of searching. Right. And they just said, John Carpenter is the drug dealer. We need to take his company. Yeah, so basically, the John Carpenter, who's the good guy here, he's guilty until he proves himself innocent somehow. Yeah. Uh, by the time we get this video up, this might be resolved. I don't know. I know that we've been trying to uh, stay in contact with him. I know that um, Amoland obviously did an article. I think GOA is going to look into this. He may have to get a lawyer. And I know at the same time, I, I spoke to him before we did this through email, he's... Um, He's communicating with the sheriff's department to try to get this cleared up. This is just one of the pitfalls of all of this that I think people don't realize. Yes, absolutely. Th- there's so many people that have very similar names. Yeah. And if you're just going to go I'm sorry like, to every John Smith out there that now yeah. is going to have to deal with this. Right. Um, if, yeah. you have a, if you have a regular Joe sort of name, this could happen to you, depending on who else has your name. Right. I think Easily. that... So if people out there think, if you're looking at all this stuff going on in the news and you're thinking, you know what, 
okay, I see what's going on there, but that can't happen to me. I think it could very, very easily happen to you that you fall into this and the police departments or whatever government agencies are involved, they decide to err on the side of just spreading a wide blanket because they've messed up in the past. There's genuine bad guys out there that they've not paid attention to. So what they're going to do now is overreact. And when you have all of these different laws overlapping and all of that, it's basically as unfortunately the president said, uh, take away the guns and then think about due process later. Kind of That's, so there's there's a couple of scary things here. Mm-hmm. The main one being no due process. No. You are you are presumed guilty until proven innocent, which is yeah. the opposite of how our court system works. And that is the biggest that is the biggest fear here. Mm-hmm. To me, there are a couple other things, including um, you don't have your self protection. If they do take your firearms mm-hmm. away, you're now not yeah. protected. You can't protect your home. You can't protect your family. That's a big deal. Yeah. And then beyond that is you have to fight the court system to prove that you're you're innocent. That's going to cost money, and that's coming out of your pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if at some point after this, if there's some sort of court fees that are involved, if the if Osceola County is going to have to pay his court fees, but. We have one, no idea. One way or another, as right as of right now, mm-hmm. he's potentially without fire, without his rights, his Second Amendment right, and he has to hire a lawyer potentially and mm-hmm. be out of pocket a couple thousand bucks. Yeah. To try to prove that he's plus innocent. there's work things that this is yeah. a guy who's employed. Yeah, you, you're going to have to take days off work. There's yeah. a lot that goes into this. So it's not to say I don't want anyone to misconstrue that we don't care about this old older lady that feels threatened here. Of course we do. And um, I don't know what she's doing to protect herself or not. I think the uh, the high probability that you accidentally get caught up in the system is what's really troubling to me, because it does not seem like these kinds of things are going to put any kind of effort into figuring out or sorting out the good guys from the bad guys. No. And that's what really, really bothers me, that they're just going to throw a wide blanket and go, yeah, listen, we're. We found you. Yeah, and you. This might not even be that guy's name. But you here's a certified letter that you need to come turn your guns. Yeah, yeah. And now that guy's stressed out. He's thinking about all these different things. The other thing that comes with that is guns disappear in evidence lockers all day, every day. Yeah, yeah. Once they get your hands on, once they get their hands on your guns, what are the protections for your guns? That you get it back if you don't get it back. The loss of property, time, all of these kinds of things. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into this. Yeah, none of that has been sorted out, and I think it's <laughs> and I'm, unfortunate. I'm sorry to, that we're I'm going sorry to tell you, but your yeah. grandfather's hunting rifle or great grandfather's hunting mm-hmm. rifle is not going to be oiled and cleaned in that evidence locker. It's going to sit there and rust. Yeah. So there's a lot beyond just the obvious that goes into all this, and it's, yeah. it's all sucks. All my my feeling about all of this is no. That's no. what I think about this. Absolutely. If someone's out there and you know this is a bad guy, then you deal with the person. I think the whole idea of, well, OK, we're going to we think you're let's say we think you're a bad guy. Let's say we establish that you're a bad guy. Right. But we're going to come and we're going to take your guns, the inanimate objects that can't do anything without an actual person. We're going to take those and leave you. So in the case of, of, of these the old most- ladies out there that are worried they would have just taken the guns away from the person if they caught the right, if they got the right guy. They're not going to, though. Yeah, they're, they're See, not going the, to. The thing is, mm-hmm. uh, a sheriff's officer or whatever didn't show up at this guy's door and say, I need to confiscate these now. Mm-hmm. They sent a certified letter to him mm-hmm. and said, please deliver your guns to us. Because they're think- throwing they're throwing a wide net. They're not spending. They didn't spend time to, yeah, to, absolutely. to, to secure but who this was. My point here is mm-hmm. if you had sent the legal letter to the correct criminal, who is mm-hmm. already doing things illegal uh, and selling drugs. Do you think he gives a <laughs> about coming and turning Well, they can't find guns? this guy. By the exactly. way, they can't find him. It's, it's the only, insane to the, think the, that a legal letter is going to do anything. And this, uh, I'll bring it back. The idea that even if you can find this person, that you find them and you go, yeah, you can't have guns anymore. We're going to take these from you. You leave that guy out there. If he gets even more upset now with this old lady and goes after her, what's stopping him from using his hands, a car, a, a knife, any other thing against that. You didn't really save that person. No. And at the same not. time, someone who's 100% innocent here now is inconvenienced and has lost, lost their right to defend and protect themselves yep. and their home, etc. while absolutely. they're trying to figure all of this out. It's a mess. My, I don't know what your thing is. My thing is don't do this. You know, we no red we, flags. Yeah. There's zero I, red flags. I'm not going to. Yeah. There's nothing that anyone could tell me. People are going to say, oh, you got to be rational about this and understand like, until no, you can come up I with a, a way of 
having this where it fits with the Constitution in the mm -hmm. sense that you get representation before they take any of your stuff away. Mm -hmm. Before, not let me have that in a month from now, show up to court and we'll give you your stuff mm -hmm. back. If once you can establish that, I'll be on board. But until yeah. that point, I'm not you can't be on board with something that doesn't give you proper representation. In this case, this guy is a clear bad guy. The actor, the, the person who they have not found. Yeah. The person who, um, the actual John Carpenter, he's he's a good guy. But this bad guy that was selling drugs and threatening these ladies and all that kind of stuff, get that guy, lock him up, do what you need to do with him. But this whole idea that you can go after people like this, the scary part is this is accidental that he got caught up. Yeah. What if someone out there deliberately did it, like how folks are doing swatting? That's, that's the next thing is, yeah, swatting, swatting has become a, I don't want to call it a routine thing because mm -hmm. that, that sounds bad, but mm -hmm. it's become somewhat commonplace, horribly commonplace, where mm -hmm. people will do it to other people. Mm -hmm. What's to stop somebody from saying, hey, this guy's crazy. He threatened me on the internet. You need to go take his, his rights away. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know him. Like, I can no. call up and say, look, this guy runs an FFL over here, mm -hmm. and he's threatened me on the internet. Like, mm -hmm. what's to stop that? Yeah. I think this is a very dangerous path that we're going down. People need to be made aware of how easy this is. It's happening to someone else right now, but it could easily happen to you. That's the thing, yeah. Yeah. Be aware of it. Uh, speak to the politicians out there that represent you on a local and a federal level and say no to them. And that this is America. We're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. We have the right to be able to defend ourselves. If someone is an actual bad actor and a bad person out there, in my opinion, deal with the person. And uh, excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, deal with the person and don't go after the things. It's the yeah. people that do bad things. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, to I, end, if you want to wrap this up to end. Yeah. Now is the time to call your representatives. I've, I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks and I haven't said it enough. Mm -hmm. Call your local representatives. It, I, I put a call into a representative that's not even mine here in Florida, mm -hmm. um, uh, telling him that I appreciate what he was doing for a certain situation. It took me five minutes to leave a voicemail, call and tell them that either A, you like what they're doing if they're helping the Second Amendment cause, or you don't support red flag laws, you don't support gun confiscations, you don't support universal backgrounds, you don't support any of this crap. Mm -hmm. Call them now. Blow them up. Daily, not like that. Call their phone lines. Yes. <laughs> Call write their phone letters, lines. Write let letters. Let them know where you're, what, what you're thinking. Every day. Yeah. Let them get them to know you. They should know your name in a week. This guy has called 20 times, and uh, I want to have an audience with him. Call yeah. them every day. There's no, yeah. th that's they're, they're on social media as well. I know that, every, up on that lots of folks out there have jobs and all that, but they're on social media, and you can find all of these politicians on social media. Let them know what you're thinking. Yep. Um on top of that, support pro 2A organizations. Absolutely. There's GOA, Second Amendment Foundation, you know, uh, maybe. I'm not yeah. going to go beyond that. Yeah, you're not going past that. <laughs> but you figure out what works for you, the people that you think are actually out there doing something, and, and get with that. Support them. Yeah. Uh, we'll, I'll roll in a link to this article if you guys want to check it out. And I believe that these guys have a GoFundMe. I'll put that in there as well. Yeah. They told me if they don't need it, if everything gets sorted out, then they'll refund everything. But we don't know what, what it is right now because yeah. all of this is kind of I would fresh. I would like to think that somebody would help me in the same situation. Mm -hmm. So I will probably end up helping him. Yeah. So that, I, I would like to see it yeah. reciprocal. Absolutely. So um, if there's other subjects that you guys want us to talk about on the, the from the cribs that we, need we to do. We a car. We yeah. Need to come, you like, you like the car stuff. Like, okay. The drive was fun. Yeah. As much as I that. complained. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we've got a bunch of other ideas. If you guys have ideas, we'll get into those things. Uh, we're trying to keep this like as a regular thing and keep mm -hmm. going with it. Make sure you subscribe to Babyface P on YouTube. It's now easier to find than ever. Use right. babyfacep.com. We'll take you to my Facebook where you can actually get in contact with me. I'm pretty good about responding. Mm -hmm. Or youtube.com slash babyfacep. I have my own uh, URL now. It's awesome. Yeah, he's getting custom URL. High tech. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting with it. That's right. um, yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel here. Thumbs ups, comment, all that kind of stuff. Ring the bell so you can be notified every time we put up a video. And we're going to talk about this and other things on the podcast tonight. Babyface is on the podcast we have, time we, to time. We have a hard fight ahead of us. Mm -hmm. When session comes back in in September or whatever, mm -hmm. we have a very hard fight. You, Everybody needs to dig in yeah. and prepare for it now. We've got a lot of bad down. laws uh, coming down. And we us. have rhinos on our side yeah. that are willing to throw us under the bus. Start getting involved now. Absolutely. And, um, and we're going to have to deal with those laws that are coming. 
And then within the next year, we're also looking at real like re-election campaigns and all that kind of stuff. Let these guys know that you're going to remember what they do now and you won't support them. Absolutely. Um, if they don't follow the Constitution and specifically for the gun guys out there, Second Amendment. Absolutely. So. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you next time.